All right, this first batch comes to us from uh, Bill Lee from Lummy Island, Washington. And uh, the first one is kind of interesting. It's a bag of snugs. And uh, so what he tells me, let's uh, pour these out here. Quite a few of them. So th this comes from the uh, Northwestern University Dental School. So apparently uh, uh, the dental school needed uh, a bucket load of snugs for some reason. I don't know what they were doing with them. And neither did this bill. But uh, now these are, these are kind of universal ones here. They can hold a couple different size rods. These are actually fairly large diameter here. Uh, 7 sixteenths or, you know, 12 millimeters or so. And, uh, um, and they have these actually very large diameter nuts on them, knurled nuts. So these are kind of nice. Um, this is quite the collection. So these are going to end up going down to, uh, to Stan's Bash and uh, we'll uh, put them out there and the people need, uh, need, need some snugs or a snug. Um, these are these actually attach to the lugs of indicators here. They sandwich the lug in between and then you can get a hold of uh, um, the shank with the, one of the snugs. Now this thing here, I'm not sure what this is. This looks like kind of, it sort of looks like an indicator accessory, but it sort of doesn't too. So uh, spherical ends kind of, well, you know, maybe it's one of those, uh, um, it has a joint at the end. Uh, I don't see the, I don't see the bits for it here. Anyway, Bill, that's pretty cool. Thanks. Uh, um, these are going to go to stands and uh, get distributed to, uh, some of the viewers so thanks all right so this next one from mr. Uh, from mr. Bill is uh, this is kind of a neat little arbor press here um, it's a little different than uh, your kind of typical arbor presses uh, in that it has this removable stage which is kind of an interesting idea um, so you can put something in there that's uh, you know you can just use this direct like so I'll put that Get it in there. All right. Well, oh, there it goes. Okay, so you can use a direct like this if you have something that's, I don't know, kind of tall or whatever. Um, and then uh, you can uh, use the press. And then you can put this kind of intermediate. Um, yeah, goes like that. And then lock that in. And then we can put this up here, which is kind of nice. So you get a little, little shorter space there. So it's kind of a nice little press here. Uh, no maker's marks on it or anything like that, um, but uh, it's just kind of a good size. You can put it in the drawer and um, use it for those uh, the small um, kind of assembly jobs or whatever. So anyway, Bill, that's pretty cool. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, kind of cool. Maybe we'll surface grind this and make it all purdy and uh, fitted fitted real nice. So uh, um, now it's just a plain. Um, a plain action it's not a compound action here so some have a, uh, a ratchet with a compound action so they're kind of a force multiplier all right so let's set that aside and then we'll look at the uh, the next thing which is this little guy here um, actually you know what I'm gonna this thing's kind of this thing's pretty special so I'm gonna zoom in and get a little closer to this thing all right let's take a look at this guy here this thing's pretty cool I've never seen one like this before so it's a little, it's a little die maker square, okay. And uh, what's interesting about this one? Let's get this stuff out of the way here. What's interesting about this one is the, uh, is the quote unquote blade here is made out of a piece of square material, and it's held on edge, um, which is kind of neat. So let's loosen that, and this pops out. And what they've done here is they've just ground. The corners of that to match this just barely kiss those which is kind of neat um, this is actually a pretty easy configuration to make uh, for guys looking for a little tool making project there um, and there's a there's the quote blade so it's kind of behaves like a bevel blade um, in that um, you know if you're if you're looking for light passing through there um, it's a very fine edge that uh, that you can um, you can eyeball against. Okay, and then uh, this has the further interesting feature of um, it, it's a tilting square, like a die maker square. So let's see if I can 
tilt this in a, there you go. Let me loosen that a little more. So with this screw here, you can actually introduce an angle, okay, and, um, and then move this in and out or whatever. So what these used to be used for, or, you know, a die maker square is you can set a particular clearance if you're, uh, um, putting clearance underneath a punching die or whatever, you can uh, you can check that. Um, now this one is uh, it's Swiss made uh, by the Mod Department or Mod Depot or whatever. I'm not sure. Never seen this brand before. I kind of poked around on the web and didn't find anything. So maybe one of our uh, our European viewers can enlighten us on the ESB brand. Um, it looks to be very nicely made. It's hardened and lapped and, and, uh, and quite nice. So it's a nice little tool. It's in its own little box and everything. So uh, um, now, you know, looking at the box, the, so sometimes the box is a little bit of a giveaway here, right? Because this is, okay, I would call this kind of a cheesy box, okay? Um, yeah, okay, it's jointed, so it's pretty good, but it's got a, kind of a cheesy hinge and a cheesy latch. So, uh, so sometimes that to me is an indicator of, uh, of uh, origin or whatever. Although, I don't know, it looks pretty good, I guess. Um, maybe I'm just kind of being a, being a ninny about it there. But anyway, Bill, thank you very much. Those are pretty cool. And um, uh, thanks for sending them into the show. Awesome. All right, this next one comes to us from uh, Dave Edwards and he's in uh, Madison, South Dakota. Uh, and he sent me a bunch of stuff, but we're just gonna we're gonna look at the uh, the more interesting uh, things that are in the thing. There's some cotton swabs and some plastic and some other things that uh, um, that were in the package. So th this this is kind of the uh, the gem of the thing here. Um, well, let's, I'm just gonna pull this stuff out and we'll get a look at it here. That, that, and then this little box here, and then. It's an interesting box. Put that to use. All right. So let's do the easy ones. Uh, this is camel playing cards here. Apparently these are uh, some kind of collector items and uh, with uh, camel matches on top of it. So <laughs> he says uh, they sell on eBay for pretty good, uh, pretty good money. So this, uh, I really like this thing here. This is just a little espresso cup or a uh, single malt cup or a <laughs> some kind of sampling cup. We'll put that to good use. Uh, looks like it was a ceramics project uh, uh, somewhere, but uh, it's a good little volume, so kind of nice. Um, let's take a look at these guys here. So these look like, uh, these are, um, um, what do we call this? Repose tools, right? Uh, where they're, uh, um, they're they have a piece of sheet metal or whatever, or a piece of metal that they're working over a, a, f a pitch form or whatever, and you can do designs and whatnot. So these are these are chasing tools or repose tools. That's what they look like to me. Uh, they're smooth and rounded and uh, appear to be heat treated. Um, and you know anybody that does repose out there knows that uh, you know you probably have 40 pounds of uh, tools that look like this with different. Um, different end features and um, curves and whatnot for doing the different uh, the different designs in the thing. It's pretty neat. So those are cool. Uh, little, you know, little punches with rounded ends. You know, those are always uh, kind of handy things to have around. So cool. Thank you very much, Dave. Those are nice. Let's take a look at this because this is the uh, this is the star of the show here in this box. Uh, there's some neat stuff in here. We'll pull it out. We'll, uh, Set the box aside and we'll get a look at them here. All right. So let's talk about these little dividers. Well, dividers and then um, uh, calipers here. These are inside calipers. And these are little tool maker calipers. And um, I think, uh, are they Lufkins? Okay. You know, the one thing I don't have sitting here is my, uh, yeah, these look like, these are Lufkin. Um, and you know all the various uh, tool manufacturers kind of made their own. Uh, you know, Brown and Sharp has them, Starrett has them, and Lufkin had them. So here's a this is a kind of a comparison here. This is a pair of these are Starrett's here, and these are pretty old here. These are actually a, one of my favorite pairs of caliper or excuse me dividers. 
Um, you know, just small design differences I'll point out to you, which uh, give it a different look. Okay, so first, let's look at the stem here. So we have a, a plain kind of knurled stem here. And then here what they've done is they've knurled and then they put a radius and then a little taper here. So it kind of breaks up that knurl and, you know, I'd have to say that if I was going to choose one of those, that this would be the one that I would choose. It's just, um, you know, the eye kind of flows, you know, so we're going from neural into a curve, you know, this is kind of boop. You know, if they relieve the end a little bit, that would, uh, that transition from that cylindrical part to this would be kind of nicer, but, uh, it, you know, hey, listen, guys, I'm not complaining. <laughs> Don't take it that way. I'm just pointing out, you know, some kind of uh, design motifs and, uh, um, you know, just the look of it. Now, the other thing that we notice here, too, is we have the leg that's that's cylindrical and then boom it jumps down to a finer taper um it kind of a, in a large step here now this one transitions kind of uniformly down its length okay um you know it, it, this this looks good right this looks good but i have to say that i kind of prefer that uh, myself um this kind of uh, abrupt transition between those as opposed to this kind of uh, what I would call a, uh, a plain uh, uh, tapering part. So, you know, once again, it's just kind of personal preference, right? And, uh, and I'm just pointing these things out. Um, you know, these are roughly the same. Oh, yeah, actually, you know what? There's another little, little one there. Um, you know, this has got a curve in it here. It's just kind of slightly fancified, I would call it. So um, um, both very nice uh, tools. Um, this one, you know, they're of the same era, right? So my first thought was, oh, well, these are really old and these were newer, right? Where they, they've kind of optimized the manufacturing process and kind of made things a little simpler to make, right? So that was my first thought. But they're different brands, so that's probably uh, can, uh, contributes to part of that. So anyway, just that. And then uh, I'm going to... Uh, get some other stuff together and we'll talk about these guys here because those are pretty cool if you haven't seen those before All right, so what we got here um, So this is a uh, this fits on a combination square, okay? And I happen, happen to have one handy here, okay? And what this does is it is it connects a blade to a combination square um, Come on there, Mr. Wizard goes. And what it does is it uh, it connects another ruler to it at 90 degrees. So here's a here's a scale here. I'll lock that in. And so now, uh, for one, you can do kind of depth measurements into something. You know, so if you have a 24 inch or um, or a long rule, you can actually um, put a straight edge across and reach down into something. And this will hold a pretty long rule too. So um, um, you can do some. Uh, depth measurements with this. Um, you can also use it kind of like a height gauge like this, okay, uh, where you're measuring uh, some feature, uh, you know, off of this is, this is a datum here, okay. Let's put it this way here. I think I got, the, yeah, I got the whole thing framed that way. So, so this is your datum and then this would be your measurement and you can redirect uh, right off of the rule here. So um, that's kind of a, a, a neat little thing. And uh, there's also Another little attachment that can fit in that that holds a scriber um, so that you can um, um, use it like a height gauge and, uh, and scribe with it as well. So, okay, and that locks onto a. What's going on here? Oh, there it goes. Okay. Um, I got to clean these a little bit. They're, uh... So, anyway, that's a kind of a nice accessory. Uh, this is made by Lufkin. Okay, Starrett makes one, and I believe Brown and Sharp made one as well. Now, this guy here, this is pretty cool. Um, so, if you need to uh, make up a longer rule, for example, let's uh, let's do this here. We'll put that in there, like so. Okay, and that locks in. And then um, you can also put one in that that has a different width as well, and you can butt them up nice and tight. So now we've made a uh, a longer rule out of it. And um, if you've ever checked one of these overall length, they're actually ground uh, pretty close, uh, uh, quality ones. 
um, this is this is a stair at here. Um, so this is pretty close to 12 inches, um, 300 millimeters approximately, uh, very accurately. So you can stack these up and uh, and still be uh, pretty accurate, uh, um, well within the uh, the graduations of uh, of the rule. So and then these fit the larger, uh, heavier like 48 inch and um, 72 inch rules too. So you can make up. Um, a pretty long ruler and have pretty accurate measurements. Uh, you can calibrate your tape measures, you can do all kinds of neat stuff with it. So, uh, and these accommodate a bunch of different widths. So, it's called a rule clamp. Okay, and this one is, uh, who makes that one there? Uh, once again, it's a, uh, it looks like a Lufkin. So, uh, uh, and it's got the cool color case hardening there too. So David, thank you very much. Uh, it's some really nice stuff and uh, I'm going to use the cup and, uh, and all the goodies here and uh, thank you sir, appreciate it. Alright, so this next one here, this comes to us from uh, Fort Bragg, California and uh, this is from Sean Hawkins and um, Sean, uh, this, uh, he runs a tiny machine shop up there. Um, he at one point had the, uh, the smallest um, machine shop that I, that I knew of, uh, of any viewer. And it was about four feet by eight feet. It was about the size of a sheet of plywood. Um, and he was working in there. He's got a little South Bend lathe and a drill press and some woodworking things. Anyway, uh, Sean, uh, uh, he sent me this. Uh, uh, it's a center finder is what it is, okay? And uh, anyway, he built this in, in his shop and it, it, it's got some small problems and uh, he sent it to me to see if I could, uh, if I could help it at all. And uh, so the short answer is I helped it some and, uh, and uh, so it's better than it was, Sean, just so you know. And uh, it had about more than about double that uh, run out when uh, when it, when it came. So I reworked this piece a little bit and made these sides very parallel and whatnot. And uh, um, but I think there's a bend in this in the main shaft is what I think is going on. So what to, what this is is it's very similar. It's very similar to a Blake coax here. Okay. So what this does? Let's see, let me get a, uh, a little stylus out here. What this is is, and you guys probably have seen these uh, um, used on on camera and whatnot. So you can reposition these. So what this does is, uh, um, it's a centering tool for while the uh, the spindle's running. So this gets put in the spindle, and you turn it on, and it sweeps about the part. And um, and when you're off center, what happens is you get a uh, Let's see, I gotta not put my hand there. Um, you get a, a, a indicator movement. So what you do is you move it around until you basically null the indicator movement while it's running, okay? And uh, and that's your center point, okay? They're they're pretty neat. Um, you know, I never got. You know, I have one obviously, and uh, I, I never kind of got in the habit of uh, of uh, of using one. But for some things, they're really really good. Um, so. Um, if you have a big heavy machine that has a very hard to turn spindle, these are great. Um, you know, big boring mills and uh, things like that, they're, they're really nice for those things. Um, also, I use this for centering stuff um, in the steady rest too. I can plug this into the, uh, into the tailstock and then sweep around my part. Um, and uh, center it up in the, uh, in the steady rest too. So, and there's, you know, they come, well, Here's Sean's. They come with generally with a bunch of different uh, styluses and whatnot of different flavors and ones for picking up center punch marks and stuff like that. Okay, so now that's all fine and dandy. Okay, let's set this aside. So, you know, Sean sent me this thing and uh, so I was intrigued and uh, uh, originally I thought that he kind of, uh, he came up with this design himself, but somebody has since told me that this is um, a project that's in, um, Projects for Metal or Guy Letard or you know one of these uh, the little books or whatever that has some projects in it Okay, uh, I believe that's the case in here. So Sean if I have that wrong, uh, please I forget forgive me and uh, um, Now I found something kind of interesting when I was poking around um, and uh, Kind of independent uh, well 
it's in the same vein as, as this, right? Um, and I've never seen one of these before, so I'm gonna share it with you guys. And I bought this off eBay here, okay? And um, let's push Sean's over a little bit like that. I think I got this whole thing framed up, yeah, okay. So this is made by the, let's see, I, Schwederman. It's a Schwederman center finder, okay? And it is very similar to Sean's deal here, okay? Um, it's very similar, okay? So it's got a disc here on a rod, and then it has a, uh, you know, there, there she goes, right? Okay, and then it's got a bunch of different styluses and some extra arms, and, uh, and it's even got a little counterbalance weight here to, uh, <laughs> so uh, when you're using it, I believe horizontally, you can kind of counterbalance it. But anyway, it behaves the same way. You grab it by the shank here, and then you turn the machine, and then it has a stylus that clamps in this in this hole here and does the same thing. Never seen one of these before, okay? And there it is, Schwederman um, um, Center Finder. So, so there, oh, and there's my little thing. So I paid $33 with shipping uh, for this thing. It just kind of flew under the radar. Uh, and, you know, it was a complete accident that I even found it, okay? I was, you know, one of my tricks is I, I look at, uh, um, let's see, it probably goes like that. Um, sellers, you know, I look at the other things that they have for sale, right? You know, if they have um, items that I'm interested in, then I'll look at all the other ones that they have. And sometimes they have weird stuff like this. And it was listed in a funny way, uh, you know, machinist tool or uh, dial tool or something goofy like that. And uh, I saw it and I, you know, realized what it was. And I go, oh, well, this is cool. Okay. So... Anyway, bottom line is, um, um, Sean, I wasn't uh, I wasn't able to uh, to do much for your uh, your gauge here, and uh, but um, I'm gonna send the, I'm gonna send it back to you, and you, I'm gonna send this one with it, so you can play with this one uh, and uh, and study this one as well. So uh, um, anyway, that's the game, and um, Sean, I appreciate you sending that in, and like I said, sorry I couldn't uh, couldn't help it out more than I did. So uh, thanks. All right, this next one's kind of interesting. Let's uh, pour these out, or some of them anyway. Oop, that looks like some of them get busted. Um, so, what are those, right? That's the first thing you guys are doing, right? What the heck is that? Well, what those are, um, they're actually uh, little... Uh, rods uh, these are piston rods out of a very special pump for uh, gas chromatography um, or liquid chromatography I should say I'm sorry so they're little it's a little piston pump and then this is the piston so it's very chemically inert and uh, it's very strong and very hard uh, and very clean uh, for doing uh, analytical work so what these are made out of is these are made out of synthetic sapphire, okay, or corundum, um, which is, um, uh, it's a form of uh, aluminum oxide, okay, it's very hard, okay. In fact, it is um, right next to diamond on the hardness scale, so, which is kind of interesting. So these are, these come to us from um, um, John Ware, right? Oh, excuse me, John Heritage, I'm sorry. John Heritage in Ware, England. And uh, he rebuilds these pumps or something, and so he ends up with a little pile of these things. And uh, he thought they might make good scribers. Well, they kind of do. Uh, they're kind of interesting that way. So what I've done is I've taken one and I sharpened it on a, a diamond wheel, okay? So it's got a, it's got a little point on it now, okay? And then um, um, we're just going to hold it in a, uh, a pin vise here. Now, uh, remember, too, that uh, this stuff is very scratch resistant. Uh, Rolex makes the, uh, the crystal, the faces for their watches out of uh, the same material. So it's very scratch resistant and, uh, and very durable. Um, R Rolex is probably not the only people that do that, but uh, I just happen to know that. Um, so what we have here is we have a piece of steel with a... Uh, a layer of Sharpie on it that uh, we have some idea how thick that is. Anyway, you can see that these, it's an effective scriber, okay? 
and it's pretty durable. Um, you know, it doesn't seem to be quite as tough as, uh, as carbide, but uh, I've been playing around with it a little bit. Um, but uh, anyway, it makes a nice little scriber. So theoretically, it should be hard enough to, to scratch carbide. So this is a carbide insert here. Um, a big one, a big square one. So technically this should be hard enough to scratch this. So let's let's kind of give it a try here and see what happens. Yeah, well, it's it's scratching it. Let's see, can you guys see that? Oh. probably see that so it's it's hard enough to scratch carbide now it seems to be not not a lot harder than the uh, than the carbide I haven't looked it up to see what uh, what the difference is uh, on the hardness scale um, so in fact I think I just lost the tip on that so uh, I thought I heard it click yeah I can see a little uh, um, a little fracture on the tip there, so uh, I think I just lost it. Anyway, it's pretty easy to sharpen. Um, anyway, it's an interesting material. You guys should look it up. Corundum uh, or synthetic sapphire. And um, John, these are cool. Thank you very much for sending those. And, uh, and I'm going to play around with them a little bit and try them out for some different things, right? Um, I, I want to measure them and see how... Um, uh, what their diameter is, I imagine that they're they're pretty precise, and we'll see how much they vary, uh, um, you know, piece to piece, and maybe we can use them to. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to use them for. So, uh, but at the very least, they make a decent scriber. So, uh, thanks for packing those up and sending them off. It's a very cool uh, little thing to play with there. So, thanks, John. All right. So this next one, kind of cool. This comes to us. Uh, from uh, Mike Zucker, uh, Zucker or Zucker, um, and he's in Providence, Rhode Island. And Mike and I have actually uh, known each other for a while now. Uh, we traded a, uh, let's see, I had a, what was the deal? Um, I had a V-block clamp or vice versa or, oh, no, that's what it was. And he had a clamp and I had something he wanted, so we did a little horse trade. I got the clamp for the V-block and I can't even remember what I sent him. It was something that he needed. So uh, we made a nice little trade. It was great. Um, so Mike, uh, he bought a lot of, uh, uh, of tools. And there was a bunch of uh, weird indicators in there. And this was one of them here. And I'm going to leave it in the white here because this is actually helping with the exposure on the face. Uh, it appears to be anyway. Um, and um, what's neat about this particular one is it says General Electric on it, which is uh, it says manufacture for General Electric, uh, which is, you know, if you are building gauges for your company or whatever, you can get them branded uh, uh, or marked uh, with your logos and uh, et cetera. Uh, what's curious about this one is uh, the divisions here. Um, and it says uh, 10 LE slash division there. So what I don't know what LE is, that's the problem. Uh, and you know, looking at it here, it looks like it's probably uh, each one of those is a thousandth of an inch, approximately. I haven't I haven't checked it, uh, but the graduations are kind of uh, interesting here. You got a hundred, you got two hundred, three hundred, and so on. So it might be for a proving ring. That's what Mike was thinking it was for, uh, which is a you know one of these load dynamometers uh, for measuring weights and stuff. So it's possible it was for that. Um, I don't know what LEs are. Large engines I uh, yeah I don't know so <laughs> anyway Mike this is kind of cool it's a uh, kind of a curious cat and uh, maybe somebody out there that worked for General Electric uh, uh, remember seeing one of those or uh, uh, what what an LE uh, stands for so uh, thanks for sending that into the show Mike appreciate it all right so this next one here this comes to us from um, uh, Jonathan Flisser and uh, he's in Pennsylvania, and Jonathan uh, actually has a, um, a little graphics uh, company um, called JF Graphics, and he's in Colmar, Pennsylvania. Actually, you know what? Let's just uh, let's just show his address there. Okay, so uh, there's his address. So if you guys need any uh, any graphics work, uh, and you're in Pennsylvania, you might uh, you might check him out. Um, 
anyway, he uh, he pulled my uh, logo off of the internet and uh, and made up some uh, some nice stickers for me. So thank you very much, Jonathan. Um, and coincidentally, I had a little uh, a little kind of a graphics job. Uh, uh, a printing job for something else and um, so Jonathan and I are kind of talking about that right now too so it's kind of cool so um, anyway Jonathan thanks for making the stickers and uh, um, I'll uh, stick these I'll stick a couple of these on something around here and then I'll uh, probably uh, send a couple out too so thank you very much all right so this next one comes to us from Mr. John Saunders and uh, NYC CNC and he's another YouTube creator uh, if you guys haven't checked out uh, John's channel uh, uh, go check it out I'll put a little link up for you and uh, actually he had a uh, he just hosted a really big uh, open house uh, back on the 30th here so anyway John uh, decided he was gonna have a um, uh, I don't quite remember the details of it, uh, a giveaway and uh, of, of some clamps uh, that he was going to make. And um, anyway, uh, <laughs> I think the story goes, uh, he really was only going to make maybe a hundred of them or something like that. I don't remember uh, what the number was, but uh, he forgot to uh, uh, put a time limit or a, uh, a quantity limit on the uh, on the uh, the giveaway and he woke up in the morning and I think there was 1500 uh, <laughs> requests for the gift so uh, anyway uh, John uh, ended up making a bunch of these apparently so uh, anyway I ended up with one so I'm pretty stoked about that um, and for those of you that uh, have not used these uh, these cantilever clamps okay they are very nice okay so they have some qualities that C clamps don't have and uh, they work great in the machine shop because um, they're kind of low profile and the the important part is so this is your clamping axis here right is the actuation axis is at 90 degrees so that's that's the the important part now here's here's an original okay just for let's see let's uh, uh, I have to go on top here. Here's an original Cant Twist, okay, and it's spelled with a K. So if you guys are searching for these, uh, uh, it's Cant Twist. I think they can't use that word or they can't copyright that word. So uh, uh, that's probably uh, how that came to pass. Uh, and they're just made out of stamped sheet metal. And I, I've had this one for quite a while, and they just work wonderfully. They're just great. Uh, for clamping things to angle plates, use them on the grinder a lot. Uh, they're just quite nice. Now, John, uh, uh, he put some of his own personal flares in uh, in this. He's got some little uh, knurled knobs on the ends here, and um, um, it's got steel jaws. Well, they're, I think these are steel jaws too. They're just copper plated, and you can see what they've done here is they put some grooves. Um, sometimes those can be a little annoying, but you can actually rotate them around and go to a smooth sur surface if you want. And then this one has a, uh, a matching groove as well, so you can kind of grab onto grab onto round things. Okay. Um, so here's John's, and uh, yeah, he's got a little E-clip on there. Uh, you know, these are made in production, so they're they're they've got some some differences to make them uh, you know reasonably priced. Um, so anyway, there you go. Uh, cantilever clamps from uh, Saunders Machine Works, NYC CNC. Go check them out. And John, thank you very much. That's a cool gift, and uh, it's going to go on my rack with uh, with my other ones. Thanks, buddy.